perfect, thanks. It's on, yeah. Make sure you test it, like it's wow. catching. Mm -hmm. Just so I know I, I plugged it in right. Yeah. Good assistance. Someday I will <laughs> want to take over my position. You get a taste. Push me out. Taste yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? This is a message to the dream ash. easier for me to capture you instead of going back and back and forth right? if you would sit next to him pull up a chair nearby not to mention he'll probably hear you a little more easily yeah. that's why it should be on wheels <laughs> well, motorized Motor yeah. we'll bring velcro next time so you don't have to <laughs> so don't you want to get answers to this yeah well, who is that? Well, um, Julia. Oh, okay. Julia. Okay. Well, I guess it's because this question here, there must be some development that is being portrayed. Pardon me. Some why, process. Why the need for the development? I was thinking of Gavin's dream, like why did Gavin have his dream in those three things? Um, I 
Um, so I don't know what the Dream Master well, is doing. Why don't you ask someone? What do you think? Hey, wait a minute. Are you someone? <laughs> okay. Yes. Good. Good. I'm actually embarrassed I don't have an answer, but I'll take a stab at it. Oh. Um, well, <laughs> if you didn't have any stages or development, uh, like what wouldn't you go through or have to see? Um, right? Uh, I don't know, there's part to whole always, right? And uh, how one section uh, uh, reflects the other, you get different dynamics. Um, and there's something about uncovering the other layer underneath this that's going to give you the meaning and the analogy. Well, why not just go there? Why all the prelude? Right. Well, I was just going to go. Jeff? Yeah. Jeff. yeah. Jeff. I wanted to <laughs> pass. Um, no, you want to take a stab, huh? <laughs> okay. That was a good stab. Thanks. Um, well, I think the Dream Master is leaving that for us to do, there's a value in puzzling through it and um, trying to find, find the understanding, what do you understand in it about yourself. So it's like some kind of a gift to see yourself. So you need the drama um, to make it a puzzle, to, so it stays in your memory. It's iconic in that sense. Um, I'm going to pass it on. Yeah. When you say just make your point, what, especially in a drama like this, what do you see as the point? I mean, that's, when you say it's simple, it's quite, this is very complex, but it has stages, and there are states of mind in each of those stages, like, you know, the last one is really, but it's like, um, Without those stages, you can't see the development, and I think it would be able easier to recognize in your daily life these kinds of dynamics if you had more of a, you know, you can't say, well, there it was, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, oh, I'm just not feeling this. Hmm, what is this? And that's what I'm feeling. <laughs> I'm feeling that it's, it's kind of like that's a, a necessary part of it that you have to see that it develops. That it has some development. Now, this is an analogy, if I'm not mistaken, to his life. That's what I've seen in dreams. So, Gina. the relationships are extremely important. You know oh, what I mean? Like, they've got to be, because you can't see the terms without good relationships. And, you know, that's what I would, that's my stab at it. Was that help? That was helpful. I did, I, you know, all of a sudden I was into this butterfly thing and then I heard back door. And did you go out a back door? I, I, I liked what you were saying. And, <laughs> Which part of it? <laughs> that, you know, I started thinking that you're seeing the getting involved in it and stuff. It was like, I was starting to think, yeah, we get to participate in it because it's, we get into the emotional part and we try to see where it's occurring in our life and we can spot it because of the emotions. And, and then it, there was the back door. What do you mean by emotion? You mean states of mind? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, Barbara has something to say. Okay, Barbara. <laughs> You're close to me. Um, <clears throat> well, I was just going to say that you didn't notice it in your day-to-day -day life. And <laughs> so you need, you need a drama and to um, accentuate and point you in the right direction. Because you, what you'd like to do, I think, is develop the state of mind or a state of awareness of the dream master. We used to talk about learning the language. And it's because we miss something, <laughs> I think, largely, that we're getting the dream. And sometimes it's repetitive because, like, you don't get it in stage one. And then it takes you through a different cycle of the same thing. You're still not getting it. Okay, let me try it this way. And so... 
until you get the knockout punch. There's a certain, there's a certain remedial practice involved in a dream, maybe, in doing the analysis. Good. That's a <laughs> shot at it. I liked your answer there, Barbara. Hey. Good. <laughs> Luckily, I had enough people so I could work on it. Yeah, I don't know if I could add to any of the drama from what's already been said, but why not make it simple and just make your point? Well, if it was straightforward, I don't, at least for me, I wouldn't believe it anyway. That's how they're That's lying, the problem. To, me. They're the lying to me. I, I don't believe it anyway. Too simple. It can't be that way. Which might tie into the drama to some of, well, I mean, you walk around the world and people That's are always nice. involved in some kind of drama. And kind of mirrors that. I, I, uh, the scenes, the different scenes uh, that we had talked about in the past about, you know, like a diamond having different yeah. facets of them, that, uh, that we get to see a glimpse of the other, other drama portions, and we somehow take in each scene, but there's probably one focal scene that we are really focusing on and that we would learn from, but the other ones would be like a reference to me that we could use for future learning. Helpful. That's my staff. Yeah, helpful, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, where would you say the problem is in the dream? It's in... Uh, it may not uh, acting on my suspicion or my. Uh, I had a bad feeling about this, about going into the submarine, but I didn't really investigate or I didn't. Uh, I didn't investigate that uh, okay. intuition. Okay. Say, hey, is it likely that that satisfies everybody and that's it, or no? Hmm. No. Okay. No. Regina? I'm reading it. Okay. No? Yes? No. Bill? Well, did his answer satisfy the understanding of the dream? No. Barb? Um, no. It did. It didn't. Oh, Sorry. It didn't. No, it should have gone this way. Not for no. Me. I need more information. It didn't. Hey, what do you think of your friends? <laughs> they think your understanding is rather shallow. I think they should ask me some questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, which one would you pick? Bradley. <laughs> I'll pass it to Julie right now. Like, like you're seeing that the answer in, in a very loose way is okay, but it, it lacks something, <coughs> right. right? Well, one thing I would say is, I mean, if you want to just get to the point of the, of the dream, you could say, I'm on a party at a cruise ship, and then the last line, I'm furious. Right, so if there's this. I mean, I would assume that if you're at a party on a cruise ship, it might have you might have been having a fun time or it was a good time. Um, so I guess I'd want to unpack your state of mind to see what, like, what state of mind, what state of mind, from um, what you just said. What was it like being at a party on a cruise ship? Okay. Go the next Th that wouldn't get you the answer you're looking for, uh. but it was what, but it was an interesting contribution. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chuck. I'm still reading, actually. Pass. Okay. Look here. Why not read it? All right. Go ahead. Oh yeah. I'm at a party on a cruise ship. I'm hanging out with two people. Suddenly, someone invites us to go with them to check something out. There is some place uh, we should check out. My friends and I start following this man through the crowd. He's going to get us there. We're following this guy, and we go down to the lower level of the cruise ship. 
and then another level down. I find it a little off, uh, not so normal. Uh, I'm, I'm really wondering what he's going to show us. Well, the problem is already there. He's going to... He's going right. to get us. Okay, second. Go ahead, keep going. When I get the, the Wait, can we can we I'm sorry, Pierre, but if the problem is already there, could you give us about thirty seconds to just kind of <laughs> chew on that paragraph? Go ahead. Okay, chewing, chewing. Best kickness. Right, you know, does anybody else have an idea where the problem is? If that's where no, no, it no. is. Just you. That's what you get for opening your mouth. I, I, do. I have an idea. Hey, he's my twin, Jeff. No wonder. Well, you could go you first. Answer. <laughs> <laughs> the only two that open their shirt. Jeff, stay together. <laughs> uh, go for it. I, I'm cheating. What do you okay. say, Jeff? Go ahead. Next paragraph. No! I want to hear what Lowe sees. Go ahead. <laughs> when I get there, there's a submarine. <laughs> It's dedicated to diving. When he gets in, uh, then he gets in, and the girl that I was with jumps straight into. She's about 12 years old, 14 maybe. The boy I was with is about 12. He kind of thinks about it for a bit, like, mm. and then he says, all right, I want to show that I'm not worried about it, but I am. So I ask. I'm really thinking about it like, the idea of suddenly going into a submarine doesn't sound good, but the potential reward sounds awesome. I, I go back and forth for a while, and finally I decide, yep, I'll do it. Curios curiosity gets me there. Curiosity about what he wants to show us. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Same, same problem. Yeah. Right? What was added? What was added? All right. He wants to show. All right, next paragraph. Oh, nice. I get in. He closes the door. He's putting on a snorkeling mask and he motions to us to do the same. I'm like, how do you actually use this? He says, you just use it for the portion that we're going to be, still have air. I get how to use it. Hey, same problem? There. An additional aspect of it? Yes. Hmm. All right, next paragraph. I'm putting it on, and now the vessel starts filling up with water. It happens very quickly, and I have to put on the mask really quickly in order to make it on time. I'm also suppo supposed to keep this helmet that I need for the trip. Now we are underwater. There's no more air in the submarine. Now the guy is telling us, Okay, now you better touch the helmet to the thing and hurry up because you don't have much time. He's kind of like a drill sergeant in the army. This is where it goes, given the nature, <laughs> given the nature of his problem. Yeah. Yep. Whatever it is. Right. Now the crisis is building. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Next. I'm holding the helmet with both hands and copying what the instructor is saying. <laughs> I have to not let any air out of it. I figure I'll have a fair bit of air for a while. Then he tells us about the helmets and I start swimming down towards the helmet, towards the middle of the submarine. I'm supposed to attach the helmet to some sort of belt with a clip. As I'm doing that, I hear him saying, you don't have much time to do it. The vessel is about to take off. Once you do it, you have to do it really quickly, otherwise it'll be gone and it will take you two weeks to go and find it and start again. I'm trying to attach it. I pull the strap through, but it's hard to pull the other strap through and attach it to the clip. So I don't make it in time before the takeoff and the helmet is flung really, really far away. Further consequence of the same problem? Dramatized further? Conclusion. Now I'm in some kind of tall building, and I know that the helmet is a two-week swim away, and I'm effing pissed off. I yell at the top of my lungs. I knock over a table. I'm furious. Okay. What's your problem? Well, 
I feel like all this could have been avoided if I had followed through on my suspicion or my hunch. What's what hunch? Well, what does that mean? Well, I had I had a a weird feeling about the whole thing, and I didn't really I don't know the guy that was uh, guiding us to the submarine, and I don't know if the submarine is safe. Uh, there are a lot of factors that make it a bad idea to go into the submarine. But I Has he stated the problem? Sort of. Not usably, I don't think so. Sort of, but not quite. I think it starts right at, oh, first line, it's at, uh, suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> He's at a party on a cruise ship and starts doing all the, I, I don't know, I've never been on a cruise, but I thought people like sit out on the sun and drink cocktails and gamble and <laughs> go into the pool. I, I don't know what else you do on a cruise ship, but this whole other thing is totally different than a, a party at a cruise ship. Did he answer the question? Did he or no? No. What do you think about it? Would you agree? Has he answered, the, specified the nature of his problem in this dream? No, but I think he's searching. Yeah, he's doing something, yeah, but he didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you see that? No, that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> right? I'm an innocent bystander. I'm just listening. I don't know why they don't agree. <laughs> no, no, I do agree with them. But why don't, why don't you agree with me? That, that your answer was insufficient? Yes. It's obvious. So how do I see the, the obvious? Yeah, yeah, right, that's the issue. Yeah, see, that's part of the dream. You have to put it all in place to see that it's obvious. Yeah. You're kind of giving him the same dilemma he's in, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I just said you're you're setting up the situation so he's in the same same boat, mm -hmm. <laughs> making the same cruise. Right. I'm doing steps. Yeah. He's going through steps, and we're pointing out something important. He is. You are. I think, like when he says, um, uh, I can't believe it. The idea of suddenly going to a submarine does, sound, does not sound good, but the potential reward mm -hmm. sounds awesome. Whatever that reward is, it allows him to put aside his judgment about this thing not being a good thing to do. That's why I'm not sure where the reward is. You have, any, did you, uh, maybe I missed it. Well, there was, I mean, it was a kind of a... Uh, well, I, I, I had like some thoughts about what it might be like being underwater and looking at and a fish or like a just fun adventure ride in a submarine. Um, kind of my mysterious trip. Yeah. But you're right, that that um, that promise uh, <coughs> uh, is what allowed me to ignore my 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 fear or my my caution. Uh -huh. Say, uh, would you mind describing uh, the second sentence, the nature, the picture, the image of that person? I'm hanging out with two people? Yeah. Well, uh, suddenly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does he look like anybody here? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> no, he doesn't look like anyone here. Well, who does it, who does it look like? He, looks, he doesn't look trustworthy. He doesn't look oh. trustworthy. Therefore, from the second sentence, the problem emerged. 
he's just if he doesn't look trustworthy, that's why it's a good idea to go along with him. And trust him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? I often meet parties who go with untrustworthy people. <laughs> 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 he's just Say, uh, would you mind doing one more thing? Yeah. Same sentence. Mm -hmm. uh, could you describe how he invited you? Like, what effect did it have on you? Curiosity. Curiosity. It was like, um, hmm, what's, what's going on here? The, the way that he invited us, it wasn't even... It was like, it wasn't even a formal invitation. It was just like a... It was like a nod of the head or a... That's all it took. The whole thing was like... Wait a minute, that's all it took? That's all it took, yeah. Just a nod of the head. Yeah. Who yeah. does that? My dad. Mmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's all in the second sentence. Yeah. <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's, uh, it's just this this one like uh, head movement which in it has all this like promise of great great things. But um, there, there it is. But the but the thing is, I know that um, like a lot of times before, when my dad does this and my dad does, I know a lot of times he's done that and there was nothing or it was really bad. It, it turned out really bad. But still, when he does it, it's so, like, alluring. It's like, what is that? What's going on there? And I just... He, he leads it as a mystery. He starts it out with a mystery. Like, there's no explanation. It's just a... It's just a signal. That's it. Mm. Then you're hooked. And I'm hooked. Yeah. By the way, uh, how dangerous is that in the dream? Very dangerous. Your, your life. My life, yeah. <coughs> like, uh, one more step. Uh, what is it about being in that state of mind that it blocks you from asking anything about the uh, situation or the event that's being suggested? Like you say, yeah, it's fascinating, right? You're drawn into it. What do you give up? Well, um, a big part of the charm of the promise is not knowing. Make believe not knowing. <laughs> because you're already are suspicious. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I, mean, I mean, like, not knowing um, where this is going. It's, it's kind of like, I want to keep the, um, the box wrapped up. That's what it, that's what it makes it so yeah. appealing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's in there. Yeah. And that, and that allows me to ignore. Yeah, enjoying what? Ignore, it blocks you from doing something. What is it? Oh, yeah, it blocks me from... Um, from, from exploring what I see. From, um, from honoring my impulse. I don't know, honoring an impulse. Um, I never studied psychology, so I don't know what it means to honor an impulse. That's the nerve impulse. Yeah, it's probably the uh, sympathetic nervous on the uh, of the esophagus. Yeah, the peripheral nerves. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it stops me from. Uh, from. 
I'm exploring what I see. But is it that you see that you're not explaining it? What would you do if you were to explain it? In the dream, what would you have to do at that stage in order to do what you're not? Well, I would, first of all, I would talk to the guy and see what he's like, uh, to see if he's somebody I could even trust. I would ask him where we're going. Uh, what is the submarine? Are you? Can you control this thing? Uh, I mean, why are you suddenly offering invitees on the submarine? That's rather curious, isn't it? You don't know him. He's just someone who's playing that role. Yeah. Why? Did, why you? And the two kids. Why us? Yeah. Maybe we look like some gullible kids. So what does it block you from doing? Asking questions. Oh, what kind of questions? Very important questions. Uh, name two. Uh, who are you? Why are you taking us to the submarine? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But what would that do to that state of mind that you find so enchanting? Mm -hmm. It couldn't. Uh, it wouldn't allow the state of mind to continue. That's why it's a good thing in the dream that you don't ask questions. <coughs> no. What? It's like a condition of that state of mind for me not to ask questions. Why are you having the dream? What's going on right now? The dream was last night. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Two nights. Two nights ago. What was going on during the preceding day that this became urgent? Did you encounter that someone? And get in that state of mind? It feels like I did recently get into that state of mind. I, I don't it's a bit hard to hold on to that state of mind. Yeah, in order for this to take place. Yeah, that's right. And the dream is pointing out the, the consequences of it all the way to the end. So it looks like you have a couple of questions for a couple of people or that you're going along. You're being drawn into some situation which is potentially dangerous. This is prophetic. This is saying, hey, better take a look at your problem because it's dangerous. In spite of the severity becoming increasingly more complex and dangerous, that state of mind allows you to stay in it, even to the end. So there is a loyalty to that nodding. Go on, come on. Yeah. yeah. It's 
it's amazing that it's, it's such a like small like it's, not it's sure. just like doesn't even take a second. No, that's it's, right. And all of this. That's right. It's all in the second sentence. Uh, is it going to make you more watchful about what's coming down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here, is it the second sentence? Uh, I'm hanging out with two people, suddenly. or the suddenly? No, suddenly. Okay, thank you. Because that he's already in following along and others and see. In that sense, he's a leader. He's the elder, and the but the kids aren't following him. They're going ahead. They're jumping. I know oh, what the hell. Mm -hmm. So you ignore all of these warnings that you get. Therefore, that state of mind must be pretty powerful. Go along state. Let's call it the go along state. Huh? Yeah. Or the nodding. <coughs> the in enticing, <laughs> enticing go along state. Yes. Okay. Return to this now, okay? <coughs> Why the drama? Is it to show the severity of the problem? That's, yeah. It certainly uh, magnifies and, it. Well, I said it magnifies it. Right. On each stage, the occasion comes up for the same thing to be dealt with. Right. And, yeah, it culminates. Yeah. It shows the power of the, of the problems. Yeah. It shows the power of the yeah. Shows the power of that nodding. Yeah. Yes. Right. You know, vividly. I mean, I, would it really be would it really be believable if it wasn't dramatized? Like if the dream master just said, "Hey, you know that nod business wipes out your seeing boy. Keep an eye on it." You know, would would he even? Pick up on it. Well, or even if he if he it. did, <clears throat> let's assume he did. Okay. Uh, what would it eliminate? This kind of reflection. Yeah, the the invitation to puzzle over it. Yeah. It demand it demands that the deep roots. Yeah. Would be glossed over. Right. Right. The family roots. See, we're very fortunate that we're dealing with someone who can record completely a dream. Very often, people just have two or three sentences or one or two of them. And they know that it's more there, but they're not able to pull it out for a variety of reasons. What do you make of the fact that as you compare the everyday world experiences with dream experiences, which one is more meaningful? Well, I'd say on this evidence, the dream is more meaningful. I'll be darned. Huh. Well, I don't know about that. Okay. I think if you don't reflect on it, it's not meaningful. It's it's there. like. Day, everyday experiences, it's there. But if you don't reflect on it and find and see the significance or meaning of it, but it certainly demands that there should be some reflection. There, there demands reflection. See, one of the questions is, uh, even especially since most people do not reflect upon it, we would like to know what effect does it have? Yeah. 
regardless of whether anybody reflects upon it or not. Mm. Or put it another way, what would happen if we just interrupt people's dreams so that they don't have them to worry about or question or ponder over? What would happen? Well, dreaming is important. Because if you don't... Yeah, what? uh, The literature says you go psychotic. That's right. Therefore, even though you don't reflect upon it, finish it. It has some it has some significance to you. Deep significance, otherwise you run the risk of entering a psychotic episode. What that significance is, I don't know. Without reflecting on it, I don't know what the significance would be, except that you don't go psychotic. Does it make changes? So, your original question was, which is more meaningful the events in waking life or the dream world. And it seems to me, uh, from our the discussion that followed, there are two components that have been identified, significance and prevention of psychosis. It seems to me there's a third component to, this, to a, any answer to this question, which is a sense of... <coughs> um, a sense of order or intelligibility, um, uh, uh, nothing there that shouldn't be and nothing uh, missing either. Uh, So while Regina's point I have to agree with, that you can reflect, if offered the opportunity, you can reflect on both dreams and waking life and get significance out of it personal significance. Clearly, we've, as philosophers, we've all done that. But it's not so apparent that missing out on waking life um, will lead you to psychosis, A. And it's not so apparent that not reflecting on waking life, uh, it's not so apparent that waking life has an order to it and a perfection that a dream has. You were disagreeing? Uh, yeah, I think that you can end up uh, in your waking life in, in a similar way if you don't reflect and pursue the pathologos. It can lead to a psychosis. In fact, I think that what huh. happens is uh, you can get, I mean, the, yeah. So people who ignore what life is telling them in their waking life? Is that the parallel to ignoring dreams? Will eventually well, end, either that or, I, I end mean, up psychotic? Well, that's interesting. It, it, it may be not clinically psychotic, but they are in their delusion. They're in their daydream. They're in their... They'll end up in a yeah, submarine. Yeah. They're what? They might end up in a submarine. They may, yeah. <laughs> Different <laughs> levels of the Going submarine. down, down, down. But see, I think what's interesting about that word as well, so we have these three components, significance, prevention of psychosis, and order, that we can compare the two. But what's interesting about this word psychosis is, um, from various experiences I've seen people going through in this group, um, I think that's a very scary word that psychologists put on something, which is actually, as far as I can tell, I mean, I'm just conjecturing here, but I, I think I have good reason to say that what a psychologist would call psychosis is actually a form of uncontrolled out-of-body experience. And it's interesting that that should be the case, because if you can't dream, um, eventually your soul is going to say, I'm out of here. Even if your body is still walking around, seemingly operating, I need some time in the upper worlds. Uh, and then a psychologist looks at that and the person doesn't, the body doesn't seem to be making any sense or they're going here and there because it's probably just the brain firing. The mind has left for a while, or the soul at least. And they call that psychosis or a psychotic break. 
But often people who've been in psychosis will come back and say, well, actually I traveled around the world, I talked to people, you know, it's an, they describe it as an out-of-body experience. But, but the mystery remains, however you understand, like you're offering an alternate way of understanding what might be called a psychotic episode. Okay. But now deal with the problem. However you're going to understand that psychotic episode in one way or the other, there's still the mystery itself, and go back to the mystery itself. Uh, which appears more intelligible, the everyday world or the dream world? Um, well, on the, so on the basis of these three components, I, I vote the dream world, clearly. Uh, not only, in fact, maybe we could add a fourth component, a sense of well, it kind of goes along with the third, the third being the beauty and the order and the perfection of it. But the fourth component being, or another aspect of it, is uh, a certain efficiency. Like so much has been packed into such a small amount of words or space or states of mind and has been put in a certain order, that's the third component. But it's all been distilled down to an extremely tight package which if we're willing to, we could spend days on unpacking after we got the core. We could go back and unpack each of the symbols, and right? Um, I, I would be hard pressed to... <laughs> I, I think life ha waking life has its lessons, clearly, and the more that we examine them, the, the better off we are and the faster we grow, but it's clearly not efficient like a dream is, in the sense of... Well, you've so, often pointed out, Pierre, that you often pointed out that one reason why you went from midwife processions, which dealt with one's problem as the pregnant party perceived it in his waking world, to the world of dreams, was that the person who's, who's diagnosing themselves and giving you a problem doesn't see the real crisis, in a sense, that they are in. They don't see the major, more, more serious problem, if I can call it that. I was wondering about this. If this, uh, if one's day-to-day -day life with no dreams leads to psychosis, does that, does that mean that a pathologos, as displayed and played out in one's day-to-day -day life, leads to psychosis? And the dream then, because it presents to your understanding uh, what is actually going on, has a healing function to even without reflection. Yeah. With, with reflection, it does great things. But even without reflection, it keeps you from having a psychotic break. Always a good thing, in my estimation. Sorry. Yeah. Got a little carried away there. Uh, pardon me. <laughs> what, 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 why did you end with it, the word sorry? Oh, I don't know. I began to enjoy it so much, I don't know <laughs> Come why. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's called being carried away. I was, you know, what you call it, it's like um, the Greek dramas. The very much like a Greek drama because they stay in your memory. And it's something that you walk away with and you have this whole memory of this. It's a play, like a play. So it helps stay in your mind. Hmm. And it becomes kind of like curious. And you, what, what? Why is that? What? What is that? You know? And like you said, if you don't pay attention to it, Another one will come. And that's a prophetic. It has a prophetic function because yeah. it shows you where it will go if you don't deal with it. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? Whoa. Yeah. You'll end up in that submarine and then it's prophetic. No yeah. math. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Where, where you say um, the idea of suddenly going into a submarine does not sound good, <laughs> but the potential reward sounds awesome. What was that that you heard? Would be the reward that was well, well, just just the nod. The what? Just the just the nod of the head. No, down here. We're yeah, I know, but um, so it's really not about the, the submarine. It's really about the nod. Yeah. The potential. Well, the potential reward is all in the nod. Like oh, I that's project. I project. Oh, uh, all this. Uh, there must be all these great rewards. All that was in the nod. Still all, okay. Everything. You heard? Oh, that's so amazing. Uh, it's it's just. It's just like a signal that means, uh, hey, there's potentially a lot of cool stuff going over here. Mm -hmm. Come with me without asking right. any questions. Like yeah. It's, that's all in the, in the nonsense. I, like I think... Um, I want to tell you. I think... 
Go ahead, Bridget. Uh, uh, sounds awesome. I think there's intelligibility in both realms, but I think what a dream does is focus on a certain intelligibility or something that needs to be reflected on given your state of mind, whereas everyday life experiences, you, uh, there's a lot of things you can pick. But it gives you something that will take your day and say that this is what will lead you to grow further in your day. Mm -hmm. Although both are very intelligible. That's, that would be a dream. Hmm. During the, if the question is which is more intelligible, Pierre, if I, I remember, I and which is more significant. Oh, I? That's what he's trying to get us to commit to. Well, I don't... If you had to pick one. I would say both. I can't say <laughs> because if you pursue excellence in your daily life, if you take a challenge and you pursue something, and you say, okay, I'm going to put my 100% into something, something's going to emerge, a problem will emerge, and you can say, okay, this is what I need to reflect on. On the other side, your dream can come along and say yay or nay on that, can support it, can say, uh, or that you ignored it. So it's hard to choose. They both function uh, kind of dialect like a dialogue with one another. To pick. I can't, I, I can't, Regina, I can, res I can totally respect your saying there's intelligibility in waking life, but I, I really can't believe you are, you of all people are taking this position. Really. Well. Because you have seen so many times, and, and you've stood up in front, when Pierre's not here, we'll do a dream together, you see the order in it, you see the intelligibility in it, I'm you not, see the efficiency Wait a minute, it. wait a minute. It's not in waking life. I can't believe you're really taking this position. What, what position do you think I'm taking? That, well, just the way you just answered. You can't decide. I asked you to commit. Well, or she, she can't asking. say. She's she can't say. say. Right? Oh, well, they're both good. You're saying there's no difference. Yes, I, I am not saying there's no difference. Well, I just can't say that this one is the most and that is less than. I can say that they both are extremely valuable depending on how you approach it. So. If you had to rank them, which would be above the other in intelligibility and so, significance? Uh, uh, intelligibility, I'd say both. Yeah. In significance, depends on how you're approaching your life. Say, so, uh, let me just put in something. Well, why not develop the... Why not develop uh, the awareness that you're in a dream when you're in a dream? And uh, check your hand at directing the dream. That too. And would that help you in seeing the intelligibility in the waking world as well, right? Would, would that have, could that affect that? Well, consequences of it would be that you are now aware of the dream and you, are, you can now play a conscious decision on how the dream will unfold. And therefore, it might show then another deeper level of a problem mm. or an escape from the problem. So then the next time he has a dream with a nod, have you had nod dreams before, by the way? No? Oh. Not that I remember. So if he has another nod dream, he'll be able to say, oh, I know that nod. It's I'll enticing, it. but... I'll just do it back to him. Well, I'm going to say, <laughs> follow me. I like that. No. Follow but, me but, here. But, but just let, let, let me try to weave together the last two points. If you're saying, Julie, if he sees the knot again, he, he now has a little heads up. 
Uh, but Pierre, so like, Pierre just previously to that, was saying, hey, what if we actually developed what's called, he didn't use this word, but he's talking about lucid dreaming. Uh, it's an awareness. Hey, I'm in a dream. Now I can act in it. Loose, I can I can take an active part in it. And what Pierre, I believe, was was beginning to get into is, hey, now we could even get some deeper insights into it afterwards. So, could we take those two comments and say, well, um, in the next dream, if he can get lucid and he sees a nod, he can take a much more active part in how he responds to it and get deeper insights afterwards. And that may, in fact, bring forward a, a, a very fundamental problem, which you never saw in the primary problem. Or you're showing yourself that you can reason yourself out of a problem. That too. Both. But, but uh, Both. does that mean then that at that point where we're lucid and we can change the, the direction of the dream, that we've taken it out of the dream master's hands? That's right. And if we do that, do we not lose the providential message that the dream master had for us? Well, if you interrupt it, then it's going to take on a different form. And, and therefore, uh, whatever lesson could be drawn from it could would be avoided or uh, resolved. For, for some reason, uh, Pierre. Or it's okay. Uh, for some reason, uh, when I think about if I if I had been aware that I was dreaming in this dream, mm -hmm. I feel like I would not have gone along with that guy. Like it seems, it seems to me like going along with him is the normal thing that I would do, you know, because that's that was my problem. But um, I feel like if I was aware that I was dreaming, I'd be like, hmm, what if I don't go along? Or what? I would want to do something different. It seems like if I knew that it was a dream. Well, the most critical point would be for awakening in this respect is that when you see the consequences are so severe that if you don't change the course of the dream, you will die. It will be your death. Hmm. But how would I see that? I mean, this? But no, no, no. May, let me make sure you were together. What would be the difference between waking up about your dream and playing a role in the first paragraph or the last? Or the next to the last paragraph. Well, okay. In the last, I would uh, see the. I would be more likely to see the absurdity of right. the situation. Right. That's right. Whereas when I'm when I'm not aware that I'm dreaming, it's more like like a train on the train tracks. It's yeah. just so the key for waking up in dreams is at the key point when it's most severe because that's the easiest easiest place to wake up physically waking up no in the dream oh wake up in the dream waking up in the dream, up in the dream. Hmm. early on when we were doing the dreams that you lived over there on that big house over there in, in Huntington mm -hmm. um, I had a dream within a dream where I had a dream and I woke up in my dream there. and told people about the dream I just had. See? But I'm in the dream. I'm dreaming this. Yeah. That I woke up in the dream and reflected on the dream and I'm telling others about it. What was the difference between those two episodes before and after you were telling people about the dream after waking up to it? You mean when I finally woke up or yes. in the dream? And the earlier the part dream. before you woke up. Oh, okay. Um, Specifically, I was interested in the difference when you then are engaging people and explaining to them this, yeah. that, and the other mm -hmm. thing in the dream versus prior to waking up to it. Yeah. Um, it was 
bright and clear and fun. The way you'd like to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was and a more authentic self emerges then. Oh, interesting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> and then are you functioning a way ideally that you would like to function in as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. That's what it does. See, it raises raises the level of the material. Mm. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. But, mm. How often do we wake ourselves up in the dream? I mean, I've had dreams where I, I gotten lots of money, you know, and I realized, oh, I know this is a dream, and it's not real, and I'm going to wake up and this money, this piles of money is going to be gone. Yeah, but I, you lost it by saying it was merely a dream. Hmm. I lost it? Well, then you no longer can play a role in respect to the dream if you diminish the fact that it's a dream. Oh. You mean like, gotcha. No. Either the last lucid dream or one of the last ones I had. I wake up in the dream, say I'm dreaming. What am I going to do now? Oh, I've been meaning to do this one for a while. Let's go for a vision of God. I've been came across that in a psychology class. The teacher was saying, you could be like the king of your own universe. And I was like, why not like have a vision of God? That upset a few people, but mm -hmm. I decided, why not? Let's do this in the dream. But I was, I'm gonna use the word disappointed. I'm, I'm not sure that's really the case at this point. But I got a vision of gold and jewels. It was not what I was expecting. I wasn't <laughs> sure what I was expecting, but it was not to get a pile of gold and jewels. Gold and jewels. Yeah, like rubies and sapphires and gold. Well, this was a shower of that's, gold to one person. That's rather gold. nice. That's rather nice. Well, I still woke up and said, I the woman with the shower of gold. Valuable things. <laughs> Curious. Oh, you got to have that part. Expectations. <laughs> yeah, usually if I wake up in a dream, whatever was happening before, that's over. I know what's happening now. Oh, I'm in control, or at least to a degree, more so than usual. Let's see what we can do with it. Well, I'll tell you what. We need someone who's willing to, to explore this. Oh, you are? I think that's uh, all of us. Oh. Yeah, me too. Oh. <laughs> so when you wake up in a dream, why don't you ask, what is the nature of the self? Mm. <laughs> I question again. Is that a good time to do it? <laughs> sure. Sure. That, why not? <laughs> what would that do? <laughs> Come on, lose your dream. You want some more coffee? Or? No, thank you. I think I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> That's a whole different level, right? To like go back to Rhonda's point. That's like, right. Or what you said, that a whole new uh, state of mind, being. That's right. That's what it'll do. Person. Yeah. will emerge because yeah. you're going to be seeing uh, it's just a different level you're going to be seeing something that you haven't seen before probably <laughs> yeah. because dreams will keep an integrity going you see dreams always have an integrity mm -hmm. I, the, I'm curious though Pierre on on the I, on the intelligibility of, I want to argue, or maybe I yeah, hope, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. I hope that uh, right now is just as intelligible as dreams, uh, and uh, two questions is like, I, I mean, I go along in my life like kind of. Uh, you know, um, not aware that providence is right. It's like, and and being uh, aware, right, that providence exists and its its relationship here. Um, but I guess like, why wouldn't you argue that this, the waking world, is just as intelligible as dreams? Our, our waking world. Yeah. Right? 
is really not separable from our culture. Okay. Right. Um, like that's very important. Yeah. In what way, Pierre? I don't know if you were going to unfold it, but I'd really like to hear it. So. In what way is our waking world not in any way separate from our culture? Well, because we we live in a we're brought up in an age that denies from the earliest age of, of education meaning. Mm -hmm. I mean, our educational system is total chaos. Mm. I mean, every, every expert who's looked at our educational system knows, knows that Nixon pulled off the death of education. Mm. And it was well that? known at the time. Mm. And uh, I was one of the people that yelled against it. But, what did uh, you do? What did you do? Yeah. What was it that Nixon did? Nixon, see, at Waldorf, there was a family that was very connected with the Nixon. And he was a chap that uh, was the money man. He'd go around to the corporations and get cash. And he was the bag man, right? He was intimately connected with the fact that this is a pay-as-you-go game. Um. And so, yeah, you know, an article appeared in the papers, right, small article, that Nixon accepted, uh, a, a, as they put it, uh, a contribution from a gentleman whose business it was to design and manufacture test scores for schools. And that this man said we must we must incorporate the idea that teachers are incapable of, of independently being able to design educational courses. They have to be supervised on the model of the most severe corporate structures, employment practices. You want to make sure they have goals. They have to establish goals. They have to give evidence for it. They have to show that their students are working like hell, therefore you have to supervise their homework, and it has to be measured, and he's going to supply all of the tests. He's made a fortune out of this. And the tragedy in our education is that our teachers don't turn around and say, well, screw this, is absurd. They go along with it. Now there are a few that are turning... There are a few that are just saying, no, no, no standardized test. Thank you very much. I have better, you know, I need to educate my students. I'm not doing any. But I absolutely agree with you. I saw that come in, even though I was in an area. I, I saw it come in. They started having us test our students. It was like, well, we have to know what you're doing in there. I said, what do you think we're doing? It's an English class. You think we're teaching underwater basket weaving? We need you to test us to be sure that we're actually teaching English? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You know, practical English. I mean, they, they had stupid ideas of, you know, an adult being able to master English in like two years. Master English. With all the things they had going on, you know. All the worries, all the trauma, all the responsibilities. They're going to just be able to pick up and be fluent in that two was, years. That was done by these people that were in... Yeah, I absolutely believe it. We didn't have it. They had to sneak it in. First they brought it in and say... Oh, we'd like you to do these. There's not a requirement. It's not tied to your money. But year after year, it got more stringent until we didn't get money at all unless we did the testing. That's where it goes. Yep. Wow. That's right. We got paid by and, and, and the teach and the and the teachers' unions went along with this, and they therefore played into the farce that has been called educational yep. system. Yep. And it's created a whole new business called tutoring. Every town, oh every town they have their tutoring. Why? Teachers can't teach under That's those right. conditions. That's what Rose talks about all the time. There's no time. Every year they have a new set of hoops they want you to jump through. They want you to improve your test scores. If your school happens to be 
of bilingual, right? It's the score, test scores are going to be lower. The state will step in and take over your school and decide they have the best way to do it and apply even more stringent requirements to what goes down in the classroom. And, you know, Rose just says it's impossible. So the teachers in her school turn to the administrator and say, oh, you want us to do that in addition to what else we're doing? Why don't you show us how you, that can be accomplished? You know, but that, it doesn't get them anywhere. Yeah, but, but, it, but it took years for them to get the courage to do it, to make yeah. those statements. Yeah, pressure, stress. That's right. Yeah, and the fact that they could see that they... Yeah, Rose says she has people in her students who, for example, can't multiply. And she has to teach them something that's like five skills level above. She can't go back and teach that person or the class as a whole. Yeah. Because they have to be tested. And they have to be tested to certain norms. She said the composition, the writing standards are unbelievably difficult. And I looked at them, and they're things a high school student would have trouble with. And they're asking a third grader, <laughs> a fourth grader, to, to write an essay with topic sentences, you know, to write a deductive or inductive yes. essay. Oh. Like, she, it sounds like a set See, the, 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 see what we need yeah. to well, what we need to institute is the school. is the Grimes principle of That's politics. Funny. Okay, yeah. which is <laughs> no one is allowed to decide on any rule that someone else must follow without signing their name to that rule. All right. Someone has to be responsible, not nameless figures in the Bureau of Education. I like it. And the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. But Harry John Smith, there's a signature. Go yeah. to him. Yeah. You have to have that accountability. Accountability, that's right. right. Personal accountability. So and I used to have a complaint against my administrator because he would he he was an MBA and his claim to fame was I use numbers to make all the decisions. He doesn't know. He would just yeah. gather meaningless data, you know, <laughs> stacks of figures. He had no idea how to do an analysis of, of data. He would just say, well, 500 students did this, 400 students did that. And I would say, have you looked at the demographics of your samples yeah. that you're determining it on? Because he would, he would evaluate, a, for example, a, a course in a Vietnamese neighborhood taught by a Vietnamese teacher where all the students were Vietnamese against a, a class taught with a mixed population where the ages were different, you know, it's like, and he would evaluate beginning levels against advanced levels. So that's illegitimate, the, those, that's illegitimate research? Oh, completely, but all he cared statement. about was there were numbers, and that's all, and, and he, like he could say, I make my decision based on figures and calculations, and I would say, what is your basis for making that? Did he get away with that? Oh yeah. yeah they needed to sign because nobody was even doing that. So he was like a, a what? A standard bearer, a cutting edge guy. It was so ugly. It used right, to make right, me right. insane. I would mm -hmm. go to him and I would point out things like he would he would say, Well look at all these teachers who have the highest marks in accomplishment and performance in the classroom. And I'd say, excuse me, those are all beginning level classes. And of course, they make the best and quickest advances because they're learning the fu the most fundamental elements. And he'd say, oh, no, 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 no. How many of those people? And they would be all just exactly as I said it, you know? Because I, I mean, I was experienced like, year after year. I knew what I was talking about. He didn't. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Caused me a little irritation. No, yeah, well, it's... Uh, oh, see. I'm so glad you got that. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, the, uh, you missed it all. The sound, the sound got cut out for a little bit here. I don't know what happened. You lucked out. Good. Oh, great. Super. See what happens when the camera yeah, locks up. Yeah, it's insane what passes for intelligibility. But you see, the only thing you can trust is numbers. Oh, oh God. Numbers need experiments. They go together. That's what was happening. And that's all you need to know. You don't need to know anything else. That's right. That's, that's uh, the point of view. That's uh, what we got. That's the conclusion to his great work on the essay on human understanding. These oh, people yeah. are true believers of this system that they've been taught.
You can't get rid of this without getting rid of the teachers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the works that have inspired yeah, them. Yeah. That's but, right. But you, you know what? Without undermining, you have to get a new paradigm, really. No. Yeah. And I, I, see, I, see this, I see this where I work. Not only in my school, but in the whole campus. The glimpses that I've gotten of it. The word they actually use is metrics. Pardon? Oh, that's it. Yeah. That's metrics. The that's the, oh, oh, well, that's we need the, metrics on this, and we're going to do this level. plan because of the latest okay, metrics we have. When you look at the metrics that the... Whoa! Oh, Shoot, <laughs> sure, that's a good catch. Uh, one chair in 20 split, so that must have some meaning, right? Yeah. Oh, right. That's yeah, right. <laughs> and the <laughs> chair of the speaker split. <laughs> when, you, when you look at the metrics they're looking at, it's like uh, number of attendees in engineering versus social it's sciences. So um, how much money we got this year, they're all, none of them have anything to do with what was learned or, or what that's was right. gained. That's they're right. all beating around the bush with these crazy stupid ass numbers and that's what they call management. It's yep. so frustrating and it, I think it, 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 it allows them to abdicate getting out of their chair and going into a classroom and finding out what's really going on. Like they'll never rate a department on... Um, Hey, how, how important is your work in sociology versus the work that's being done in USC in sociology, qualitatively? Is, is either one of them, is either department moving the field forward? They never ask that. Instead, they'll say, they'll have a metric for it, like, um, especially now with Google Scholar, they can track this. Um, how many of you have had articles that have been quoted in the last year, and how many, how many in other words, citations? It's a citation yeah. trail, right? And um, you get an index per professor on the number of citations that you've been given, all completely devoid of any meaning, of course. But you had 73 citations this year, and you had only 15, so they get rated individually, but also as a department based on this metric, right? USC must be not as good as we are because total they only have a score of 1,000 and X, right? This is, this is the whole metric game. <coughs> I think it goes back to what you said originally, Pierre. Uh, uh, this is Hume, but the corporate, the corporations took on Hume as well. This is the model that was imposed in Nixon's time. But Let's look at numbers and ignore it. So that it. follows the behaviorism and all of the other forms that take on the same basic principle? That's a, a, another example of it is I had to write a, a report for just the number numbers that I got for certain, for the math study. Um, and all they wanted was numbers. But I wrote a five-page report, and I described what was done, who I talked to, what was involved. When I turned that in, and I showed it to different people and showed it to the dean, etc., well, how can you translate this into this little two column statement that we want to just see what this, you know, some statement of this and some statement over here. And the two columns was about a half a page. And I said, I, I'm not doing that because there's more involved in this study than those two columns. And that's why I did this five page report. And that, that it's worthwhile if you ever can talk to them to ask them, how did you come to these two categories, these two columns? Like, where does it come ah, from? That. What's the source of this? Because you're pointing to something that you think is a sign of, of meaning, of, right. of, of significance, and it isn't. No, all they wanted was uh, this is the pre and this is the post. And this is how many uh, I talked to. So, okay. was, your, was your original point that uh, because we're so culturally bound... Thank you very much for breaking my chair. Uh, by, <laughs> by all these... No, that's yeah, just what you've heard. That, um, get another the dream campus. world is more intelligent. And therefore, we've robbed our culture of meaning.
That's all. Apart from that, it's a great place for Coca-Cola mm. and but, but is the meat, but is the meat hamburgers and, and, and uh, things of that nature. No. But Pierre, would you say the meaning is the, I don't even know if the word same is right, but is this waking world um, have the same meaning? Oh, wait a minute, do that again. Does, you just put me in there, go ahead. Say it again. Yeah, does, I guess the, fun, the, the question is, is, is our waking life as intelligible as the intelligible? Is that possible? Of course. Of course. So then one should be able to um, I'm wondering what that would be like like Well you just described it. You just said it. So you can tell me what would it be like since you just described it. Well, well. every single moment would be full of meaning and you would be seeing it. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. It is. But we're not. <laughs> Sorry. Well, well, we are on the level of the Dream Master. Oh. I was joking about the second part, right? He said every single moment full of meaning, as you know, and we're seeing it. And you said of something on the level of yes it is, and I was just saying, but we're not seeing it. We're not. Meaning my pathologo self. My dream master sees it all. Mm. What do you think? It seems mm. like that's the high the highest Same. level of spiritual development, maybe, right? Is that what it sound like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we're cool. Oh. Well, just that uh, uh, I've had a rather curious background. Mm. How does that play into this? Uh, well, when I was about six, seven, eight, every night I had the most fierce nightmares imaginable and kept increasing. So finally I said, fuck it, I'm not going to go to sleep. <laughs> and so some days I'd be lucky enough to nearly go the whole night without it. And the next day I was groggy all day long, but uh, went on and on like this. See, till the one, day, one night I said to myself, Pierre, haven't you had enough of this shit? The next time you're in that kind of a dream, wake up. It took about, I think at that time, maybe a month of pleading b before going to sleep. You're going to wake up. And so then one night, I had this terrible thing that's going to come through the door, and I could take a look at the crack in the door, and sure as hell, I woke up in the dream, say, and I said, well, no point in opening the door, Pierre. I'll look for another way out. So I found a doorway out. And so I started lucid dreaming quite early. And it saved me from innumerable, terrible nights of uh, fearful dreaming. Oh, that's just, it's a, had a peculiar use. So in the dream you had that idea of the drawer, I mean the door that you went out, in the dream itself. Oh. So if you have been a lucid dreaming since a young age, yeah. have you ever asked in a dream what is the nature of the self? No. You no, because... Uh, 
Uh, uh, I was extremely uh, uh, involved as a, as, you know, just puzzled about the absurdity of the everyday world. You know, just, and uh, uh, I had one of these things called the divine luminosity dreams. So uh, I no longer had a question about the nature of the self. <laughs> Um, I find that interesting. So do I. <laughs> that you would say that. But whenever there's a, huh? a chance for me to talk about what I'm interested in, what you find interesting, I'll go for what you find interesting. About it? Yeah. What do we find interesting about it? It's but so since that, divide, you said luminosity, haven't you found a deeper level to the nature of the self? Thank you. Well, sure. I mean, that was the self emerging. Emerging. And so you've pushed that question s since. What is well, this? In my waking world, not in the. Ah. Hmm. Well, I have a question about. Why have you not done it in the wake in the dream world? Pardon me. Why have you not put? Why have you pushed that question only in the waking world, but not in the dream world? I thought I answered that. Well, I think uh, what I was getting at, and maybe Barbara too, is it sounds an awful lot to me like uh, the second hypothesis, not the first. Yeah. And you've had us question. Well, when you're have, when you're in one of those states, you're enjoying the divine luminosity. It's still an experience. You can ask, what is experiencing this? No, but that didn't occur to me until many years later. Well, but that's what I'm asking you now, is, is now, is many years later, why not? Why not ask that? Because I, I assume that was, that when I did the work called Being the One, mm -hmm. that's when I was holding the viewpoint that there's nothing higher than divine luminosity or the brilliant light of being, and that was the one. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well... Well, no, I get all of that. I guess what no. I'm saying, though, is that... I don't have, that's why I'm having trouble answering your question. I don't understand it. Well, that was then. This is now. Why not ask it now that you have a different or higher view of self? Why not ask it now? Oh, because I answered it. <laughs> oh, okay. That the divine luminosity was the self. Because, because I, got, I got an answer to it. Yeah, family obligations. I got an answer. Yeah. Then I realized that that wasn't the highest thing. That was not the highest thing. Of course. So why not ask for the highest thing next time you're in a dream again, Lucy? Why do I? Why do I have to ask about the obvious? <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> hey, I have another question for Elder. We're here tomorrow. We're here tomorrow. Do you? Or, or maybe I should ask Eldar's question. Uh, how um, how can I get to see the obvious too, if it's obvious to you and not to me? Huh? Or well, I didn't change. I didn't change from that idea of ultimate reality being divine luminosity until I got into Zen and. Uh, I got into an interesting state of mind, and uh, it played havoc for the uh, full year on my life. Uh, I, I uh, was in such a clear state that uh, it was unmistakably the one. At that time I could use that word. And so uh, I started moving around my everyday world. I didn't run into Corey Roshi for uh, a curious reason. Uh, I was up all night having fun. 
and uh, fell asleep 4 a.m. or something else like that, and I missed the morning session. <laughs> but uh, like I went back, got the family. I was living in Santa Ana, Tustin, and got my wife, Linda, and I said, let's go to San Diego with the family, the kids. And I'm sitting there with a piece of paper and pencil, and my wife is making comments, and I'm just making notes. And I said, here, look, uh, 34 criticisms in uh, 18 minutes. <laughs> 34 in 18, to a minute. <laughs> and it was obvious, you know, I just... But it was devastating to the other party. I didn't realize I was walking. I was a deadly, you know, I should never have been allowed to walk across the street alone. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, in that sense that uh, one of the Zen people could have said, hey, be careful when you walk out of here. Uh, the state of mind you're in, if you're clear, you're walking into a chaos world, you know, and you start opening your mouth, watch what happens. So, you had no boundaries on yourself, yeah, I sure did. Can't hear you. You can I ask, oh, are you done? Sorry. Can I ask about the self keeps coming up. Has anyone seen themselves, what they look like? Oh, that's easy. No image. No what? Oh, there's no image? No. Thank goodness. Okay, I saw the same thing then, or I didn't see the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Didn't see the same thing. Yeah. I know. No it, image. Is it, no uh, image. Uh, no are image. you doing calm practice? Or what? Pardon me? I was just curious, like, what you were doing prior to that breakthrough. Were you working on calm practice? or? Well, um... <clears throat> or just Zazen, or what? Uh, you know, I I used to make the statement that I was using, I was a Platonist using uh, a Buddhist pillow to do Plato. And I used to tell that to my Zumi, and he said, I don't care whatever you do, just hold on to whatever you're doing. And I said, well, Yeah, he was a pretty good guy at the time. Well, I know when we were going to those sessions and Corey Roshi was there, huh. and we had, it was kind of unprecedented. There were so many Kensho's people in this philosophy group having Kensho, sanctioned Kensho experiences, and that's because we would take walks afterwards and reflect with Pierre yeah. on what was going on. And you you know, so it just... Huh. I think that's documented in Joseph's book, isn't it? Yeah. Is it then the Roshi said, I've never had such a splendid session in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Little did he know that walks along the back, along the street were encouraging enlightenment experiences. <laughs> that's because to them it's all Maya, right? <laughs> Yeah. So, how can we uh, get into lucid dreaming? What? How can we get into lucid dreaming? I told you. Just do it. <laughs> just do it. Tell yourself. Uh, Eldar, some yeah. of the books that I brought are on lucid dreaming. Yeah. If you want to just do it. Just do it. Tell yourself. There's all kinds of techniques. Just know how. Just tell yourself. Just do it. Just do it. You know that. The, tell yourself you're gonna. There's do a guy up in. Stanford named Stephen LaBerge, who does lucid dreaming. He used to have a similar nightmare where somebody was chasing him and he was scared to go back to sleep. So one night he told himself that when the figure comes tonight, he's going to turn around and ask the man what he wants. So he did that. And at, when he asked him, okay, what do you want? The figure just kind of came toward him and became kind of like smoke, and it just kind of went into his 
body and just disappeared. And he didn't have the dream again mm. after that. So he started he that lucid dreaming. But he didn't institute. conclude from that experience. No, in fact, what he has now, what he, he offers now is these goggles you can put on. And when your eyes start to go into REM movement, meaning you're dreaming, a, a red light will come on on the goggles, which is supposed to alert you, the sleeper, that you're now dreaming, or you're now dreaming, yeah. And then yeah. apparently he can train you how to then get into or wake up in your dream or something. Yeah, someone will always find a gimmick to sell it. Yeah, yeah. it's a gimmick. Very expensive. Yeah. I'm for it. You go for gimmicks. Do you have... Can I... Can I I've, been, I've been wanting to ask... So I guess uh, in Elder. conclusion I'd say that you could... If you see the nod tonight in your dream, you could turn to the guy and say, So what's up with the nod, dude? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. That's I'm today's good. bumper sticker. Yeah. What's up with the nod, dude? Um, I was wandering in and out making myself bagels and coffee, so this may have been asked. But it strikes me that um, there's an interesting contrast between the dream of yours that we explored last night and the dream that we explored today, which happened the night previous, actually, right? The other dream happened three weeks ago. This happened two days ago. Okay, so that actually, but we explored it last night, three yeah. weeks ago. Um, do you see any, before I tell you what I see, do you see any, anything interesting in contrasting those two? Okay. What was the dream last night? I forgot. It was Mother's Trivia. Mother's Trivia? Well, both of them, uh, deal with the extreme of a, of a problem. Like That's right. They both go to the end of the, where, where the problem oh, would end. That's right. Uh, the worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So that's a similarity between the two. Yeah. And we never caught the nodding head problem mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. This is fundamental, more fundamental. See, because, uh, yeah, but uh, Eldar has been dealing with this same problem for quite a few months. Right? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> that means no. Nice. <laughs> Would you agree that uh, mm -hmm. the one theme that recurs is you are not, come on, you are not. I thought, um, voicing, I'm not uh, acting on my seeing. I'm not They're not asking. You're not questioning. what needs to be questioned. But I don't quite see that in last night's dream. I mean... What was the conclusion of last night's dream? I forgot. Well, I was able to see the, the dynamic of the drama and where it goes. What brought, what did you learn from that dream that became important for you to act upon if you chose to act upon it? What was, the, as it were, the moral of the dream? Uh, it was about um, my, my mom's advice about um, uh, fighting to the death over a trivial, over no. a trivial thing. No. And, um, you never questioned that, did you? Never questioned her. She was so positive. And yeah, 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah. What do you make of that? I would kind of like, uh, I'll be like, I, I kind of, I think it's like a bit extreme, but I didn't question it. Really. That's right. I don't know, it didn't that showed your mother, this showed your father. Mm-hmm. And they're opposites. Mm. One is the mother is uh, making the most of minimal problems, and your father is making the least of maximal problems. Mm. <laughs> Questioning neither. <clears throat> But in both, you are not questioning the teachings in the dream. No, no. Isn't it curious that, like, I benefit, thank you for sharing your dream, I, I benefited. It seems like you always benefit. That's even, astonishing, even isn't it? Even though it's not my dream, right? Like, that is astonishing. Like that, or another. Right? I mean, I mean, you can read a thousand stories that won't have any effect on you, but you might be just entertained. But with dreams, what happens? It, it goes to my essence, my soul, somehow or another. I can, it benefits me by listening and seeing and, well, what his you, his personal drama and struggle, you know, and then... And, and no artist, no writer that you know of can capture that. Never, not even, no way. That's right. Yeah. Bradley, when you say it benefited you, and it goes to your soul, um, would you Every say time. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. even matter who it is, usually. Uh, can you talk more about... Can you put anything more on that? Like, uh, is it just a feeling, uh, a good feeling? Is it a sense of clarity? Or no. does it lead to specific insights in your own life? Similarities. In your own life. Yeah. Like, how many times have you not asked questions? Yeah, yeah. That you should have been asking. Yeah. Sure, Jeff, yeah. Did, like, this dream we here, I, that this word suddenly. Off. I could see it because a dream I explored of myself maybe like three mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. We go through the dream and it's I'm functioning quite well through the whole thing. I win the battle or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> why did it come out? And then there's right in the first line it says, I'm, I go out on this adventure. What does adventuring mean to you? I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> I, I can end up in a lot of trouble if I do that. And I heard that word oh, suddenly man. and it kind of had a similar feel. Okay. I'm like, Man, I would even want to go on an adventure right now knowing that it might not end so good. I'll, mm. I think I've modified this quite a bit, though, in my own life to say perhaps I ought to consider what I'm really going to get myself involved in if I choose to do this adventuring thing. Like, what are the consequences, potentially, of what's going to happen? Like, is yeah. this going to be just mild bad stuff or really bad stuff? Or could it be positive? So. It brought me, you know, just hearing his thing, I'm like, oh, no kidding. He's got a similar kind of game as me, too. Yeah. And for me, the word, that, much like you, I experienced uh, some benefit because the word, uh, I shied away because I was playing with cameras. I didn't want to jump in. But for me, the word that stood out was should. Sure. Mm -hmm. In the I same sense. that one, too, yeah. The should. And I instantly saw that word, should, and I went, why? Right, right. Why we should sh I? We why should, should check. Yeah, there was suddenly someone and should all just screamed out to me, what do you mean should, why someone, these aren't normally, just That's stood out. <laughs> and that was the problem you were, you were looking at, Pierre. Curious. Yeah. Well, if you're not, are you leaving? Hmm? Are you leaving? He's sitting. He's still sitting. <laughs> well, I was because reaching. I had a dream and I wanted to know if you were leaving, I didn't want to get into it. No, you would ask him to do it just as he is leaving. So hang on. 
Julie just hey. nailed you. Hey. Weather. <laughs> yeah. He is leaving. We I didn't notice he was hey. leaving. Whether I was going to leave or not, what's on your mind? Well, I didn't know he was leaving. Is he leaving? <laughs> wait, here, wait. Listen, as cameraman, I only have one question. You want to pursue a no. dream, and he may or may not do it, but should we do it or on camera and push it up to the web, or shall I turn it off? Because it is 12.15. Oh, I okay. can go either way. 12.15, yeah. If That's you want it recorded, I'll leave it going. Okay. I don't know. Which care? I'm not going to do it. Actually, I Would you like to do a dream with Regina? <laughs> Would you like to? <laughs> Let him decide while well, everybody else is talking. Regina asked me whether or not I was getting ready to leave. I see. And I said, independent of whether I was or was not getting ready to leave, what is on your mind? And I'm waiting for an answer. Well, I, I asked, and I said, well, I have a dream. And that was the reason why I brought it up. The rest of the morning I saw was really important to not bring in this because it generated from what Eldar was talking about mm. and the significance of the question you asked. Okay. So I said, okay, and it seemed to have reached a plateau, so sure. that's why I introduced it. Yeah. Have, and you printed, have you printed it up? That's thoughtful, by the way. Yeah, and yeah. so that's why I said, okay, are you leaving? Because I know that yeah. you yeah. leave at yeah. plateaus sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we can do it after uh, tomorrow? Sure. Okay. Or if I have another dream, I'll do it that. Gavin and I have a, have a, have a project. Who? Gavin and I have a project. Who's it, Gavin? Yeah. You mean the one I know? Yeah. We decided, as of last night, that when we go to sleep, we're going to ask where do dreams come from. Oh. Oh, that's a good project. Oh. We could all do it. When the microphone comes <laughs> up, I think we are. Uh, <laughs> the clothes leave the head, and then the dream Thank comes in. Yeah. So he, he and I are working on that project. Good. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Click. For a new kind of literature distinctive from all other kinds of literature. Now that's interesting. Uh, I just cut off the camera, but Pierre just... Yeah. Dreams... Dreams present a new kind of literature, right? Yeah. You collect all of these dreams that we have explored. Mm -hmm. Yep. It would reveal that this kind of literature, statements of dreams, oh. fit in a different class that oh. English teachers or people of that nature mm. would qualify. It's not entertainment. If they would go through their categories, there isn't one for this. That has the effect that Brad mentioned, as right. many of you agree to. Wow. In fact, they Therefore, would say poetry is self-expression. No, when this is the real self-expression. No, but no. it's only it's only after the midwife does his his art, right? Because just reading it, I like no, it's not there though. Well, okay. O only then, when, but you see then you're saying that there's a certain kind of literature that requires analysis, and the analysis brings to it a level of meaning that you find increasingly challenging and worthwhile exploring and seeing relationship to yourself. Every single time. That's a new kind of mode of communicating, Yeah. different from Hemingway, et cetera, et cetera. It's a narrative. And I, would, and I would add that it's because you're reflecting on the image of the individual and the contrast to the self. And that is what it continually occurs. And so we each get to participate in that because we're 
then contrasting our image and what we ourselves see ourselves as and raising the question of, okay, what is it that is behind this image that we have? Well, wait a minute. So you're putting it in the class of koans. Yeah. But how could Only these are intelligible koans that require an intelligible solution, not well, acting see. out. Well, I don't think I was taking that away. I'm not I was raising that. it to the question I'm just adding as, to we're, it. as we're observing it. No. So I don't think I was berating it as a koan. I was not assuming that. Well, you said that, so I don't know how to approach that. I see them as intelligible, and that's what makes it possible that the intelligibility <laughs> of that image comes forth yeah. in the reflection. Yeah. Well, the, the world and that's what makes it beautiful. Yeah. So I don't know where an image of Zen, the uh, koan, comes uh, in. A Why did it go there? A dream gives the dreamer a question, something to puzzle over that is koan-like. Yeah. And therefore I said, dreams have that quality that normally you find only in things like Zen koans. But you contrasted it and said that I was creating the Zen, I was, I was seeing it as a koan, and that dreams have intelligibility, which is different. So I didn't see that that's what I was holding. Okay. But oh. I was seeing that dream. I, oh. I was taking what Brad said. It's a new kind of literature, and if you ex and the reason I see it as new is because it's from the individual, and the individual image of that person is is not written down like Hemingway would take maybe this dream and create a story out of it. But he's reflecting on himself as to the meaning of that image that he has in dreams and taking it as something worth reflecting on. Yes, but I think what you, Pierre caught that, I think what you're saying is exactly right. And what Pierre was saying is what you just said about him reflecting on it and finding meaning in it and blah, blah, blah. He captured it and said, yes, it is something to puzzle over, but, and it's koan-like, but the difference between, say, the Zen koans and this kind of a koan is that there's an intelligibility, the reflection that you just said right there, versus yes. something to be acted on. I don't know what that means, acted on. Many koans can be answered by acting out. Oh, demonstration. Okay. Demonstrating. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Here, it's discovering meaning. Right. Therefore, it's similar, but there are differences. Well, I, yeah. I, I was working through what it was that, of giving significance to what you were saying regarding to what Brad was mm -hmm. and you were talking about. And I was adding to it. That's why. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Fun? Thank you so much. Thank you. Fun? Yeah. Again? Again, <laughs> fun. <laughs> fun. Thank you, Mr. Grimes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, we're doing this. My hat, Steve. My hat. <laughs> Your hat's off to me. My no. hat. I don't know. Okay. Your hat's off to yourself. Okay. Did you take your the balance? World, the world, the world would be a very different place if this was a category of literature. Mmm. Mm. Mm. And the new education that we're going to start is that yes. children tell their dreams and teachers can guide them to their level of meaning. That's rather good. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And every kid has a little dream book. Yeah. That might get published at the end. <laughs> yeah. After reflection, because they always take musical. Right, children see. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, with this, okay. you know, of course, you might have a little problem with uh, 
the role of parents in education. <laughs> and education. <laughs> Get them the hell out of there. <laughs> how, how dare how, you four-year-old, you six-year-old, how dare you ask for intelligibility in this family? <laughs> That's right. That's right. We're going to put uh, you in the washing machine. A, a friend of mine once said kind of the, uh, the opposite of it in the negative way. She said, there's only one rule in a dysfunctional family, and that's the rule against asking what the rules are. That's right. That's right. Okay. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Thank you.